Hi everyone, uh, Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays. I, as I'm filming this right now, it is December 25th, 2010. Um, just wanted to shoot this video while I had my camera handy. And uh, before I actually get to the main part of the video, I just wanted to give a brief message. Um, these days, times are tough, money's pretty tight. And some of you might be working during the holidays or don't have enough money to go fly back home and see your friends and family. So I uh, just wanted to let you know that I've been there myself and I know what you're going through. And um, as cheesy and as corny as it may sound, um, this video is dedicated to you. And just wanted to let you know that there's at least one person out there who's uh, thinking about you and wishing you well. Uh, but anyways, uh, today I was hanging out with my family and it's pretty boring. We usually just all cook a bunch of food, eat until we're ready to pass out, and then watch a movie. And today somebody brought a video called Julie and Julia. I think that's what it's called. And it's about a lady who decides to cook all the recipes in Julie Child's um, cookbook. Uh, it's a really cute movie and uh, I like it. highly recommend it. And it reminded me that I had this video sitting on my hard drive. Um, I shoot a bunch of videos, I throw them on my, my hard drive, and then I totally forget about them. And I need to catch up on it. But uh, that one in particular reminded me of this. i um, been doing a lot of gear reviews, and I actually had the idea to do a couple of videos on some of the things I cooked on the road. Uh, when you're traveling, especially for extended periods of time, it gets really expensive to eat out at restaurants all the time. So if you're staying in a hostel or a guest house, you might want to use the kitchen that's... Uh, available and so you might want to go to the supermarket pick up some ingredients and cook something on your own so I thought I'd show maybe a couple of recipes that I was able to do while on the road um, while I was working in the States I actually worked for a couple of years in a Thai restaurant and my mom showed me how to make this Thai noodle dish called Pat Siu which is a stir-fried noodle dish and um, it's pretty simple to make I was able to make it when I was in England, Wales, Australia um, even in Brazil, so it's not too hard. If you can find a decently sized supermarket or a uh, Asian foods section, uh, you'll have an easy time to make it this dish. So uh, yeah, just thought I uh, would put this up. I actually shot this a couple of months ago and totally forgot about it. Um, I'll see what other reviews I got on my hard drive and I got a, tile, a pile of other videos that I need to shoot and put up. So um, I'm putting this up now and uh, would love to hear what you guys think. If you want me to make more if there's some suggestions or changes I need to make, uh, please let me know. And uh, yeah, would love to hear what you think, and hopefully this is helpful or entertaining. And by the way, sorry for the background. I just in the cooking theme, I would show you some of the stuff that I use when I'm in the kitchen. Um, I was actually gonna just shoot myself, but uh, I'm just so gross right now from eating. I am just so bloated. Got the meat sweats and everything, and it's disgusting. Um, but yeah, uh, I'll get to the video, and uh, would love to hear what you guys think. And hope you guys are having a safe and happy time wherever you are. And uh, hope you have a great new year. All right, on to the video. All right, so these are most of the ingredients that we're going to be using while cooking. Um, first off, we're going to start off with a meat version of it. In this case, I have beef already pre-sliced. Um, you don't really need any special cut of it, as long as it's lean. Um, because you're going to be chopping up into small bite-sized pieces anyway. If you're vegetarian, however, you can also try going with tofu. Um, have it halfway cooked because then you can like pan fry it and cook it as much as you want. So basically you're going to use this in place of meat if you're a vegetarian. Or you can put it in as well if you're using the regular meat version. Got eggs. Some chopped up broccoli. I like to throw in some mushrooms. Got a little bit of sugar. Uh, in this case we got brown sugar. I'm trying this out. Never used it brown sugar before but regular granulated sugar will work just fine. Uh, the noodles here I picked up in Chinatown. Now, um, usually if you go to a Chinatown, you can find a specialty store that will make these. But if you don't have access to that, when you go to the Asian food section of a supermarket, they'll have the dried noodles in the packet. Basically, you can just take those and cook it like pasta. You put it in boiling water, and then when it gets to like the consistency you like, you strain it. I would leave it out for about half hour to an hour to dry out a little bit, just because it's so wet when you've cooked it fresh that when you put it in cooking, um, it'll get soggy. So. Uh, that's about it. Those will work the, just fine. These are better, but uh, you can use the dried stuff in a pinch. A uh, little bit of dark soy sauce. You're not going to use that much of this. This is more for uh, a little bit of the flavor, but you don't need a lot of this. And then the, one of the main ingredients is oyster sauce. Um, I like this brand. When in doubt, get the one with the old Asian lady on the bottle, but otherwise um, I would avoid the one with the panda on it. That's the one I seem to find all over the world. 
no matter if I'm in Europe or Australia. But uh, if you can get the oyster sauce with like the Asian writing on it, I tend to find that it tastes a lot better. Uh, for people who are totally vegan, though, um, some places actually do offer uh, vegetarian oyster sauce, which tastes pretty good. Uh, not quite as good as the real thing, but it does it in a pinch. And if you can't find vegetarian oyster sauce, I've actually done it with molasses. Um, you won't get the same amount of savoriness out of that, and it'll be a little bit more sweet. But if you're working with not that many uh, materials, you can get by with molasses. But if you can, try to go with uh, the regular, regular style Asian oyster sauce. So I'll start with the cooking. Do I need to push? Nah, that's cool. Don't worry. That was my friend Megan. I'm using her kitchen in her apartment. Don't worry about it. Um, I'm just going to make a big mess and I'm going to leave it for her to clean up. So anyways, you put a little bit of olive oil. Oh yeah, olive oil. That's uh, one of the ingredients you're going to need. Sorry. So you put olive oil in the pan. You add a little bit of meat first. And since I'm not used to her stove, I'm going to put it on really low heat. Lower heat. And basically you don't want to cook the meat all the way because you're going to be adding stuff and then if you cook the meat all the way and then add the stuff, it's going to be burned up. So basically just put a little bit of beef in the pan. I like a lot of beef. And all you have to do is just make sure it's not pink. That's it. As long as it's not pink, you'll be totally fine. Put a disclaimer in this video so that if anybody gets sick eating this, that I'm not Hulk accountable. <laughs> so, patsyu is a really popular Asian dish. Um, some of you guys who eat a lot of Thai food might hear of a related dish called pad ki mao. Pad ki mao is basically, whoops, still good. Pad mao is basically just pad siu with uh, Thai chili peppers added in. And in fact, pad mao is a really popular dish uh, late at night. You go to Thailand, you go to Bangkok around 2-3 o'clock in the morning, um, you'll just see like a line of people who order from like noodle stands like a bowl of pad mao, like the noodle dish. And they'll just be sitting there eating, um, trying to wear off their hangover. So, um, pretty good dish. And they're cheap too. I mean, I hate buying Thai food here in the States. Not only just because I know how to cook it, but also because... Um, uh, in Thailand, you can get like a good bowl of pad siu for about a dollar, and then you come here to the States and you're paying about eight bucks, which drives me crazy. Anyways, so now that you've cooked the beef, what you're gonna do is you're gonna take one egg, crack it, and then you're gonna swirl the egg and you're gonna scramble it. Still trying to get used to this stove. up a little bit higher. Hopefully you guys aren't too bored as I'm cooking this. And it got cold again, so I'm going to keep doing this. And if like there gets to be a little uh, slow spot in this video, I'll just uh, pause it and then restart it and just edit the clips back in together, which I think I'm going to do right now. Okay, got the heat back up on the stove. So, basically you just want to swirl it around so you scramble the eggs. Then you take some noodles. Basically, uh, the general rule of thumb for uh, most recipes is uh, about 100 grams, whether it's rice or noodles or whatever, for um, a serving. I like to add a little bit more. So you just add the noodles in there and... So about a handful, a good fistful is a good amount, you guys are wondering. And now is a good time to add the sauce. So we got our little old Asian lady sauce. <laughs> and I'm going to use this spoon as a measuring thing. Say about two tablespoons is good. Start with less, and then if you feel it needs a little bit more savoriness, you can add more a little bit later on. I like it really, really tasty, so I add about two and a half tablespoons. I never really measure up my amounts. I usually just guess and think, you know what, I'm just going to add a little bit more. It's okay. This is the one that I'm eating, so only I need to like it. I think I can put this on. Oh, yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Just get it to me. This is cool. I got a sous chef. 
Huh. Like on those cooking shows. Speaking of which, this is so much easier than when I cook alone because I got somebody to like chop up stuff for me and have it all ready. Huh. This is like the most unprofessional <laughs> Wait till you get the bill. I know. So a little bit of that, and then just the dash of the dark soy sauce. Like that's it, that's all you need. Too much and it's gonna be a little too salty and uh, it's gonna overpower the other flavors. And then on top of that, sugar spoon please, thank you. Depending on how sweet you like it, some people like it on the sweet side, but some people like just enough sugar to um, make it like have that nice savoriness. I'll use a teaspoon, half a tablespoon. Um, be a little bit conservative on it. And then if you want it a little bit more savory, you can add more. And then stir it around. Do we have white pepper? Uh, not white, but there's pepper. Up here? Yep. Oh, perfect. There's crushed red and... So I'm not making pad kimao because I didn't have the chili peppers on me, but just for fun, I'm gonna add a little bit of crushed red pepper. Just a little bit for a little bit of the taste rather than to make it spicy. Then... Oh, it's actually I, a... Just kind of, so you just one of those fancy things it. where I twist it? Yep. Oh, cool. Nice. And then a little bit of black pepper. Um, I usually like to put white pepper, but both work in a pinch. Also just for the flavor, not to make it particularly spicy or anything like that. Now the two things that people miss is a lot of times they'll forget the sugar, and without the sugar you just don't get that same savory flavor to it. And another thing way that people go wrong is that they won't cook it long enough. So I like to put it on low heat and then let it kind of really sit there and take my time with the cooking. A lot of Thai restaurants, some of the cheaper Thai restaurants, the food isn't that great. Watch how they cook in the kitchen and you'll notice that basically the cook will take all the ingredients, throw it in, stir it around for like a couple minutes or even a minute and then he'll put it on a plate. And then when you get it, like the noodles are still soggy and stuff like that. What you want to do is you want to take your time on it and let it actually sit because as you let it cook more, what happens is the water content of the noodles is replaced by the flavor from the sauces that you put in. So I like to cook it really long until it gets pretty dark uh, from the sauces, not from like burning or anything like that. So the general order is always the same. If we're doing it vegetarian style and if you guys want, in fact, I think I might tack it on at the end if we have a little bit of time. Um, instead of beef or chicken or whatever at the beginning, just use tofu and then go in the same order. First tofu, then add eggs, then the noodles, and then the sauces, and then we can add broccoli. Also a handful. And I find that uh, in terms of meat, you put just a little bit of meat and it goes a long way for the dish. Whereas vegetables is the other way. You put a ton of vegetables and you think that's a lot, and then after the cooking, it doesn't really feel like you added a lot of vegetables. So, let's see how this goes. And just guesstimate it. Practice it a couple of times and you get, you'll get the hang of it. So you put the harder vegetables first because you want to cook them to like a nice consistency and then the softer vegetables last. So the very last thing I'm going to put in will be the mushrooms because if you put them in too early they'll be all soggy by the time you're done cooking. And that's another reason why you don't want to cook the beef all the way because all this time sitting to wait for the noodles, the vegetables and everything else to finish. If you have it already done at the very beginning the beef will be burned. favorite part, I just grab like a noodle, hot, hot potato, hot potato, and I'll try it out. Hmm. I'm going to add a little bit more sugar. And you know what? Just more oyster sauce. I'm a big fan of tons of sauces and spices. Mushrooms. And 
And some people like to put peas in as well. Um, it's usually not what you'll find. Usually, if uh, I go to a noodle stand in Thailand, it'll usually be beef, broccoli, and uh, some mushrooms. It's a pretty simple kind of dish. But, I mean, what can you expect if you buy it for like a buck off a cart? And it's so good. I mean, no matter how many times I cook this, I cannot get as good as those noodle vendors in Bangkok. And my problem is, I always want to like toss it around thinking it's going to make it cook earlier. Um, just let it sit for a little bit. Just let it sit on the pan for a little bit, and then stir it. Instead of always shifting it around because you want to give it time to like kind of cook through the pan. Mmm, getting hungry. I haven't had dinner yet. And neither have you. <laughs> Do you have a plate? Yeah. Like a large plate? Then when you're done, I'm gonna take this over. Let's see if I can do this elegantly, which I never have. And there you go. That's a plate of pot siu. If you guys want to turn the pot kimao, just add uh, some chili peppers and some basil. And you guys are all set. So uh, that's pretty much our little cooking video. If you guys like it, have any questions or comments, feel free to PM me. Um, and if you guys like it, maybe we'll do another dish, like maybe a curry. I was thinking maybe doing fried banana with ice cream. Um, so yeah, thanks for watching, guys, and uh, have a great day. Hey again guys, if you guys are meat eaters and that's all you want to make, then that's fine. Tune off and click on something else. Uh, Megan just suggested maybe I should just film me cooking the tofu stuff. Um, basically, you cook it exactly the same. You just put tofu in at the beginning. Um, if you guys are just kind of fascinated with seeing stuff being cooked, I'm not even going to talk while I'm making this stuff. Um, but uh, yeah, I'll just start cooking. Oh, I will add one thing that while you're cooking tofu, unlike meat, which actually has to be cooked all the way for safety reasons, um, tofu is edible, man. You can even eat it raw. So pretty much just fry the tofu up to whatever consistency you like. Some people will like fry this up until it's um, nice and crispy and dark golden brown. Uh, other people like it on the soft side. So we'll see how this turns out. Do you like it? Do you want yours like really firm? Or? Um, I like it medium. Like a medium? Okay, yeah. cool. Pretty firm. Pretty firm. Okay. I'll just call you over and have you look at this plate. Okay. So do you get usually flavored tofu or just... Um, really it's up to you. Um, from working at the restaurant, I usually uh, am used to just getting plain old tofu. Then the sauces add the flavor later on.
Things are good? Yep. Yeah? Good. Oh, yeah, so what if you have a vegan? Can you make this without? Instead of eggs? Mm -hmm. Um, I heard somebody did this with bananas once. Really? Yeah, because... Well, I mean, that's more for baking because all the eggs are a binder when you're baking. Right. So if you want to make a vegan cake instead of eggs, you just mash up a bunch of bananas and use that as the binder. Um, so some people, like, it'll be more on the sweet side, but they'll use, like, uh, mashed up green bananas. I mean, I thought it sounded gross. Um, you don't need eggs. A lot of people, like, will get a beef or chicken pot to you but ask to not have eggs because they just don't want to taste the eggs. Yeah. So that's about as scrambled as you want it. Mm, and you add some noodles, good handful. You pretty hungry? Yeah. All right. Sweet. A little bit of old Asian lady. I don't even know the proper name for this sauce. I just know it by the bottle. It says on there somewhere. Like it says old Asian lady in Thai. <laughs> that would be an awesome name for a brand. A little dash of the soy sauce. Dark soy sauce. the pepper and the chili, please. Yay. Megan's going to Costa Rica at the end of September. If I talk nice enough, maybe she'll bring this camera with her and get some stuff that we can put on the website. <laughs> maybe I'll cook this in Costa Rica. You will be very popular. One thing I've noticed while I was traveling those two years, like no matter what hostel or whatever, oh, you yeah. want to make friends, be in the hostel kitchen and just cook and just put a plate, an extra plate out, you will make fast friends no matter where you're staying. can still taste the sauce on the outside. You want to cook it so that the noodles absorb the sauces. Like I was saying before about crappy restaurants will like rush it. Oh, yeah. And it feels like a rice noodle with sauce on yeah. top of it rather than a rice noodle that tastes like yep. blah, blah, blah. So actually, I'm, I'm stirring too much. I should just let it sit here for like maybe 30 seconds, then stir it and let it lay out again and cook for 30 seconds and then stir it up. Or we can be spicy too, I forgot this is mine. Yeah, you, you can add as much as you want. So not my hands. Yeah, it's not your fault if it's... It's like super hot? That'll be good, it won't be too hot. Okay. You like broccoli? Mm -hmm. You want a lot of broccoli? Sure. Okay. This is lunch tomorrow, too. Yep. I'm going to make a couple extra batches for letting me use your kitchen. Oh, yeah, and I highly recommend you guys at home, if you're making this stuff, make extra portions and just put it in, like, a Tupperware or a glass container. Then you'll have lunch for the previous day. I always overcook just so I have leftovers to take for lunch, so that way it's a little bit less cooking the next day. Or you can give it to a neighbor. Make a meet your friend. Thing moves pretty laid back around here. Like background voices and people doing stuff and cars, and cars passing by. Go okay. 
Can I, can you come here for a second? Try out. Oh, here. Grab a noodle. And tell me what you think. If you want a little bit more savory, I can add more oyster sauce or pepper or even sugar if you want a little bit on the more savory side. Mm, more? Oyster sauce? One of the sauces, yeah. Okay. Probably. Yeah, right. Definitely good on spice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is actually more like two portions, I guess. I was just gonna ask. Like a lot. I'm pretty bad with portions just because I'm used to cooking like large plates for restaurants. Mm -hmm. Like people used to usually order family style, so I'll make like a big plate. So I'm not really used to cooking for just one person, one portion. I always have leftovers. Yeah, About 10 minutes. If you're fast like my mom is, she can do it in like three. Really? Oh yeah, it's a terror to behold. She'll turn it on super high heat. Yeah. Where like if you don't know what you're doing, it'll get burned. And she'll start throwing stuff in and swirl it out and then throw it on a plate and it's like done. Awesome. But I mean, yeah, she, I mean, she owned a restaurant for like 20 years, so you get pretty good at doing stuff like that. And she can taste like a noodle and she'll know like, oh, it's missing this. Right. <laughs> Doesn't measure. I don't think I've ever seen her use like a measuring spoon. She she'll just like pour stuff in and she'll know that that's like the amount. But I think that's a mom thing as much as just like her. Totally. It is a mom thing. Yeah. Ah, a little bit just a touch extra sugar for you. Yeah, it's good. I like that. Pachi Mao. I think this would qualify even though we don't have actual Thai chili peppers. And Makita. May I have a plate, please? Thank you. Do you want me to take that? Yeah. There you go guys, tofu patsu for the vegetarians out there. And if somebody like me can figure out how to make this, so could you. So go out there in the kitchen and start cooking. Take it easy guys, bye.